First one is hybrid system, second one is switch systems. They are similar, okay? So let's first define what's hybrid system. So the formal definition is hybrid systems are dynamic systems that consist of components with continuous and discrete behavior, which is uh, what I taught last uh, on Monday, okay? Um, and there are some logic decision making and uh, embedded control action, rea control action or reactions that are combined in the continuous physical process. So in this, con uh, the f continuous physical process means the continuous dynamics. This logic decision making are discontinuous behaviors or discrete behaviors. Okay, so they might be um, um, vague, but let's give me let's give an example here. Okay, so here you can see two systems that switch between. So this is the first system indexed by Q0, second system indexed by Q1. Okay, you can say this is one, this is two, two systems. Maybe you have multiple, you have three systems, even more. Okay, so basically the state is Q0, okay, depending on which system you are in, and, which, and uh, the, the state X0, okay. So only one, only one system will be activated given any time, okay, only one. So assume you are in here, okay, when T is zero. And in this system, the state is X, which follows this dynamics, okay? So you can see that X have a solution according to this ODE, okay? And that means that X is, all, the solution of X is always in this set, in this invariant set, Q0, okay? And this is Q1. And um, the timing to switch between the two is this condition. When G is a function, G is a function of Q0 and Q1, okay? And when under some conditions, um, maybe this function satisfies some, some condition, then it will switch between from Q0 to, to Q1 or Q1 to Q0, okay? So this condition is G, and there's another G that switch from Q1 to Q0, this system to this system, okay? So G is, we call is the, is the guy or garden ma map, okay? That when the discrete state transition occurs, okay? The discrete state means Q0 and Q1, okay? And X is the continuous state. And there's a reset map that happens when you switch from here to here, there will be a reset map. They could reset the states because the state, which is S or Q1, can be discontinuous, or, or we say it's jump, okay? And I, IMV is the invari invariant of Q0, for example, here, okay? For example, uh, they might be um, vague based on this definition. So let's take a look at the example. So here is the uh, the uh, heater, okay, thermal state. So as soon as in the winter you might turn on the heat to keep the room warm enough, okay. Um, for example, you want to keep the room, okay. You turn on the heater in the room, and let the goal is to regulate the temperature around seventy five. Very high, okay, not Celsius, which is around, I think around 20 Celsius degree, okay, 20, 20, yeah. So you want to keep the tempera room temp temperature at 75, but that's quite impossible for now, uh, for maybe a few decades ago. Okay, so the control strategy for the heater is um, the best that you can do is 
to keep the temperature between around 75, which is between 77 and 73 and 77. Okay. So when you turn off, when you turn off the heater, when the temperature is, is high enough, say 77, then you will turn off the heater. The temperature will go down. Okay, the temperature now is the continuous state, right? Conti the state cannot jump, right? So state has to be continuous. But you have two discrete states. One is this, one is this. Okay, you turn on, you have only two options. Either heater is on or off. So when you turn and based on different discrete state, you have two different dynamics, F1 and F2, right? This is heating up the air and cooling down, uh, cooling down the air, heat, heat, heating up the air. So when the temperature is high enough, you cut off the heater power. Temperature goes down until it reach to 73. Then at this point, you turn on the heater. So the temperature goes up here and re going back and forth, right? The process repeats. So in this case, what is the discrete state? As I mentioned, this is discrete state one, Q0 and Q1. Okay, the continuous state is X, which is the temperature, and they follow two different dynamics according to the discrete state, right? So this is a, um, a example of hybrid control, okay? That can be modeled by this map, right? Heater is on, heater is off, and based on different discrete state, when heater is on, for example, the X will increase because temperature will increase, otherwise decrease. And there's a condition when you will switch between the two, right? The condition is when the heater uh, temperature hits 75 or 70, uh, 73 or 77, right? That's the two different guidance map, okay. So eventually after um, this controller or uh, for the hybrid system, you can see that the temperature can be controlled between 73 and 77, which is around 75, okay. And here's the, um, the map. And you have two guide conditions. If it's below, temperature is below 73, okay, then you will turn on. The, 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 the heater will from off mode to on mode, and the uh, two highs, uh, you will cut the power, okay? So it's continuous state for the temperature, and this is discrete state, which includes on and off. Okay, and second example is the uh, bouncing ball, okay? Um, so this is x, uh, time axis, this is the uh, height axis. So for example, you drop a ball, you drop a ball from the height of y. X is the uh, position of the ball, is the height of the ball, right? And initially it's what it was. Y is the position of the ball. So um, the common equation or the dynamics of the ball is y double dot equal to minus g. Y so y double dot is the acceleration, right? Which only, um, only you will only be uh, because the only force in the system is gravity. Okay. So um, this the dynamics the state is continuous all the way until it hit the ground. Okay. And what happened when after it hit the ground? This. Um, some discontinuous behavior, we say it's collision, right? Or, uh, y plus means the time before you hit the ground, okay? And uh, Y plus means that the position after you hit the ground, Y minus is the position before you hit the ground, okay? But they are zero, because plus and minus is just a small difference, okay? So before, uh, after it hit the ground, the velocity will change, right? Uh, y dot is velocity, and plus means after you hit from the ground, the velocity will be equal to, the velocity will change the direction, which is minus. C is the discount factor, right? You, before you hit the ground, the velocity might be 100. After you hit the ground, 
it might be become ten percent off, which is from nine from one hundred to ninety, right? So this count factor is point nine, right? So this is the change of velocity after after the impact from the ground. So this can be modeled by this can be described by your hybrid system, which is this. Okay? So um, but in here, there's only one, only one dynamics, which is the acceleration is under effect by the gravity, right? And this transition, it transits from the same state to the same state, right? And it happens when you hit the ground, which is x1 equal to 0, and velocity, x2 is the velocity, is, is minus, right? And after you hit the ground, this velocity will change the direction, which become positive here. Okay, so this behavior can be modeled by hybrid systems. Okay, and before, if you don't use, if you use conventional dynamics, you cannot model this behavior because obviously there's a discontinuous state in terms of velocity in the system. Right? Yeah. Before we, what we cover in this class um, in this semester before this course is all the, the, continu the uh, continuous dynamics, right? This is the first time you see the discontinuous dynamics. And here's the, um, the case of the pendulum fixed uh, that connected to a car. And you want to swing up the pendulum to the um, upper right position. Okay, and you can use switch control. And here you will see one, two, three, three different procedures. So here is you remove the en uh, here is you pump up the energy, which is which happens when you are in the um, in this position where the pendulum is on the down downside. Okay, you want to pump up the energy so that the pendulum can swing up to the um, desired position, which is right up. Okay. So you uh, pump out energy for the first step. Second, you wait, uh, you, uh, you wait the pendulum to be. It was my oscillate around here, so you, you wait until uh, and um, when it's close to the right the right up position, you remove energy so you can stabilize the the pendulum to the desired position. Okay, so. Um, this can describe the procedures. And here's the controller you design for each phase, right? In this phase, you design this controller that can use to pop, pop, the, uh, pop the energy to the system, right? And here, you do not, the controller doing nothing, right? It's zero, it, it does nothing. And here, you remove energies. So compare here to here, one is minus, one is po positive. So there are different functionalities. Second, switch systems. It's very similar to the hybrid systems. Okay, uh, for example, you have continuous state x. You have this creep behavior, which is you switch the system from one system to another system. For example, from f1 to f2. F is the differential equations. Okay, but the x, the state here is continuous. Okay, the only discrete state is this sigma, which determine which system, which dynamics you are in, okay? So only one of these subsystems will be activated at one time, okay? And there, is some, there are some rules. Here is state dependence region. So the switching, the decision making of this sigma x can be determined by some, by fun function of states. That's uh, why we call state dependence region. Okay. So if you say if you have four subsystems, four system F one to F four, okay, and you define some state dependence regions, which is these blue lines, that means that when they state, this is phase pottery, right? So every point on this surface is a state. When you state is here on the boundary of this line, they will switch to another system. 
Okay. Let's stay switching dependence. Uh, stay dependent switching. So the objective is um, you design the switching condition. You design this surface, okay, this blue lines, such that this trajectory, this red line, which is the trajectory of solution, right? Which is the trajectory of X, can be stabilized to the system, to, to the origin, to the or desired position, okay? So you need to design this blue line, the switching conditions, and maybe the controller for each subsystems. So you have two, two things to do, right? Design controllers and switching conditions. Okay. So secondly, common variable functions. So uh, we have mentioned that you have many subsystems to switch between, right? But how can you show what's the tool that can be shown to um, to to demonstrate the stability of the system? And the tool is one of the tool. Okay, is one of the tool. Not not the only tool. Is common variable functions. Okay. So. To define common variable function, first we need to consider a uh, hybrid uh, switch systems. Okay, so um, so if you consider this x star equal to a x, that's that's what we talked before, right? And this is a linear system, and a determine the dynamics, the nat natural dynamics of system. But now you have different a a one, a two, this because q t is belong to a set from one to n. Okay, you had different subsystems to switch. Okay, and the objective is you want to control the state which is continuous. Okay, even though it's switch between systems, the state is still continuous, right? There's no jump on the state. For example, the temperature cannot jump, right? It's a physical. Um, it's a it's a value that never jumps, so. Um, even though it's switched between systems. And the objective is control the state to, to zero here, okay? So um, for a synthetic stability, you need to construct a variable function here, okay? V, and V dot is negative definite as long, okay, negative definite. And And what is common variable function? Common variable function means that layer they, is, for example, there's a quadratic function, which is this, okay? It's a PD, PD function. And this P is unique, and that satisfies these inequalities, okay? The P is unique, it's only uh, the same P, but for different subsystems, for example, if you have three subsystems, you have three A1, A2, F3, right? So you have A1, A2, F3, three different inequalities to be satisfied. If you can find that P, then V is a common level function, okay? Then we can say the state will be stable no matter how you switch between systems. Maybe back to here, you have F1, which is A1x. Uh, okay. So this is the a system. But assume that we, we don't consider controller here, we just control, con consider systems, three different systems. And only one system can be activated at a time. Okay. So, um, is the system stable or not? The overall systems. How how do you prove that is stable or not? So the two is common variable function. So the condition is given a variable function, 
Okay, the P is unknown, you need to find P. And the way to find P is you, you need to satisfy these three conditions. If you can find the p that satisfy these three inequality, you can say this liable function is common liable function. Okay. Okay. And the system is stable, no matter how you switch. Okay, it doesn't matter the switch, switching sequence. Okay, you can arbitrarily, arbitrarily switch between systems. Okay, so how can we prove this? So, so v, v is this, and v dot is p x dot plus. Okay, and you substitute the x dot here. x dot is equal to an x. For example, a one x. So if this power is negative, definitely. So, which is the condition of uh, the first condition, right? If this condition is satisfied, then um, the first v dot will be negative, definitely, right? For, at least for the first subsystem, and you can expect that if you substitute the stability, the dynamics of second system A two x into layer, the v dot will still be negative, definitely, right? Same as the third subsystem. That means that initially, if your v0 is here, OK, v0 is here. And at this time, from t0 to t1, from 0, T0 to T1, from T1 to T0, T0 to T1, assume that the activate, activated system is system 1. Okay, this is switching signal, right? And only uh, at any time, only one system is activated. And let's say between this time, the first system is activated. A1x, the A1x is activated, right? What happened? What happened to the um, liable function here? According to the v dot, right? V dot, and you substitute a one x, and you can see that v dot will be negative definite. That means that v will decrease. V will decrease, right? And because x is continuous, so v is also continuous. So, in the second second time slot from here. V were continuous, and if the second system is activated, and again V dot is still negative, definite, so it will keep continue to decrease. But the, the decreasing rate might be different because this value could be different. Okay, but no matter how you switch between the systems, no matter uh, here is one or here is two or three system is at, the third system is activated. It always decrease, right? Same as here, same as here. So eventually, you know, v where it goes to zero. Okay. 
So that's why, that's why this is the condition to find P. And P defines the Diabol function. And we call it common Diabol function because for there's only one Diabol function more for multiple systems. Okay. So um, I remember that some of you asked me how to find the above functions, like um, two weeks ago when we taught the above function, right? Because at that time, given the above function, I always just give you the above function, and I did not say how to design the above function, right? But this is one another uh, one way to de define to design the above function, okay? You can set up this inequality in a MATLAB and that result will return you the P matrix. And so another condition you need to set is P is greater than zero, P is PD in your MATLAB code. So that, then you guarantee that um, this P is positive definite and it's a common label function. And if you can, uh, if you can um, this decide which system to switch. Okay, if you can design, if you have, you have three multiple systems, you can choose which system to switch. If you have that uh, freedom, then you can choose um, the best one, which is according to least low. Okay, so this X transpose F is the decree. Uh, you can consider as. Um, kind of V dot, okay? The de decreasing rate. And you choose the mi minimal one because, um, okay. However, um, the existence of common level function is only a sufficient condition, but not necessary one, okay? Which means that if you can find a common level function, they will be great. It guarantees the system will be stable. But if you cannot find one, that term means system is unstable. Okay, there's still some gap you need to figure out, okay? Because it sometimes it's too conservative and even infeasible to find a commutable function. And it doesn't imply the system is unstable. Like this is stable. But if you can find a common level function, common level function in, is in a set of stable. If you can find one, that guarantees stability. But if you cannot find one, that means it can be here. Okay, it can be somewhere here. That was not the case for a common level function to exist. But it could be still stable. Okay. And second, the, the fourth topic is interesting because um, when you switch between unstable systems, what happens? Can you, can, or the question is, can you f stabilize the system if these systems are unstable? Can you s design a switching law that um, guarantee stability of the overall system? even though each subsystem is unstable? And the answer is yes. For example, if you have two unstable subsystems, A1, x star equal to A1x and A2x, and A1x, A1, A2 have eigen, all the eigenvalues are positive. That means both systems are unstable. And can you, um, can the overall system still be stable by a prop appropriately design a switching condition. Can you? Is, is yes. Okay. Um, for example, here. Uh, A1x. So you have two subsystems, both are unstable. And by appropriately switch, this is A1x. Okay. And this is A to X. And by appropriate switch, for example, uh, here's um, so um, A1X. So 
in here, if you start from here in A1x, the solution will go this way. Okay? If you are here, the solution will go this way. Okay? And this is the, the, the dynamics or the trajectory when you stay stays at A2x. Okay? So if you properly def, def, design this switching condition, which is this line, these two lines, whenever this, uh, so I initially if you are at system one and that will, the, the, the system will push the solution to here, right? When you hit the con switching condition, it switch to the second system, A2, and the solution trajectory becomes to here. And that hits another uh, switching condition and it, it switch to from two to one. And switch, switch, switch. Eventually that guarantee that solution will converge to the origin. Okay, so that's the uh, example when you switch between unstable systems. Okay, so that's the that's the phenomenon that you is hard for you to imagine before this course, before this class, right? Okay. And again, again, you can, the way to find, the way to find that condition is you can use, you can try first, you can try common level functions, if it exists or not, okay. And there's another tool called multiple Diablo function, Diablo of like functions, okay. Multiple means there's not, now, it's more than one variable functions. It can be multiple variable function in one system. For, uh, multiple variable function be used to analyze an overall system. Okay. So there are uh, there are families of piecewise continuous and piecewise differentiable functions. They are concatenated together to produce a single non-traditional variable functions. Okay, multiple variable function. And it, you, you merge those to to a single label function. So the way we say non um, non traditional is because the property, the the way we define label function is a bit different. So a family of label function like function, the uh, other like function is this. Okay, you have index i, and i is between one to q is a set of one to q. Okay. Um, such that each vector field, which means each subsistence, have its own variable functions. So if you have Q number of subsistence, then you will have Q number of variable functions, the corresponding variable functions. So the condition, the, 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 the theory to use to prove stability is this. Um, assume in this example we have two variable functions, V1 and V2. Okay. This is time, uh, time axis. This is the uh, double function axis. So assume in this system, okay, in this time slot, the first system is activate, Q is equal to one, okay? And later is two, one, two, and repeat. So in this time slot, you can find the corresponding double function, which is V1, okay? V1, and V1, it has to decrease, okay? It has, has to decrease. And the way to make it decrease is you can design the controller for the first system. Same as the way we taught before, right? You design controller for a single system. That can be achieved, so the double function will decrease. But when the time happens that, when the switch happens, the switch between Q1 to Q2, uh, in this time slot, the corresponding level function is V2, okay? And it has to decrease as well, okay? But what happens in the same time slot to V1 is it, it might increase, but it's, it's fine, okay? If, if it increases, that's fine. 
The most importantly is when you switch back to Q1, okay, from Q2 to Q1, which is this type point, this value, the V1 value at T2 has to be um, smaller than V1 at T0, okay? You compare these two, okay? When you switch back to, so here's Q1, here's Q1, right? So when you switch back to Q1, okay, we compare these ti two time points. This value had to be smaller than this one, okay? We compare the same variable function, V1, V1, okay? And later, when you, um, in the second system, when you switch back to Q2, Q2 here, you need to make sure this value is smaller than this value, okay? Okay? And if that happens, that means that eventually V1 will decrease to zero. V2 will also decrease to zero. Okay. So the reason to, to introduce multiple run, the variable function is because they, the two si given the two system, they, there doesn't exist a common variable function. Then you have second options, which is multiple variable functions. Okay. But again, it's very conservative. Okay, the way to switch this is is not is very conservative. Okay, so again, it's a sufficient condition for stability. So um, to conclude, what I just say, um, the condition for stability is this. Okay, this is what I just said. For, okay, so given a, a family of variable function, v q. Okay. That, um, that corresponding to each vector field a q x okay for each subsistence so q is the sub index okay and for any i smaller than j and let t i smaller than t j okay and t i and t j index the same subsistence because q t i equal to QTJ, okay? Remember this is the index for for the discrete systems, right? Okay, Q1 to Q, Q, QI, QTI, QTJ means QTI, QTJ. They are belong to Q1, but at t different time slots, okay? Same system, different time slot, okay? Same system equal sign here, but different time slot, T1, uh, TI, TJ, okay? So for the same T, same systems, right? QT, a different time slot, QTI, QTJ, the sendable function has to decrease because this time TJ is greater than TI, okay? Same as TJ plus one, T, uh, TI plus one, okay? So you compare the same variable functions at different time, but the tendency is it has to decrease because here is a minus, okay? So example, uh, assume you have two, uh, again, the same system, okay? The system we just mentioned, one and A2, okay? Here, you use a, uh, a system one, you use system two, system one, system two, okay? So the way to design this switching condition, these two lines is that you find P1 according to A1, okay? So that means um, it satisfies this condition, okay? A1 transpose P plus PA1 will be, minor, will be a negative definite matrix so that V1 in this system can decrease, right? And V2 in this system can decrease. Okay. So um, here we use V1 and V2, V1, V2, V1, V2. Okay. So the first time when you stay at system one, the variable function decrease. Okay. Right. But during the time, the second time when the second system is on the variable function increase because it goes from here to here, right? This is v, uh, V1 and this is V1, right? 
And at this time, this V1 increase from here. Okay, it increased. But that's fine. Okay, what we really care is um, is the V here had to be uh, smaller. This V had to be smaller than this V1. Okay, this V1 has to be smaller than this V1. Smaller than V1, right? Then the smaller than the previous V1. Smaller than the previous V1. And it's fine. Okay. So eventually, um, the system V1, V2 will both goes, go to zero. Okay. And this is the corresponding Liouville function, which is S transpose P1x. S transpose P1x. This is X, X transpose P2x. This. Okay. And for each Liouville function, okay, for each subsystem, the Liouville corresponding Liouville function has to be posi positive definite, and Vita ha Vita has to be um, decrease. For example, V1 and V2, right? And you switch back to V1, and you find this V1 value is greater than the V1, the smallest V1 value here, okay? So the smallest V1 value in the first time slot is this, okay? And when you switch back to V1, which is here, you compare with this value, okay? And you cannot switch until this value is smaller than this one, which is here. You say in the control, we need to know yes. the dynamics. Yes. So we, we will define the switch time. In the control, we need to know the dynamics. What, uh, you mean we, knew, we need to know A1? Uh, uh, yes, we obvi obviously we, we already know A1, A2, and we, we can design P1 and P2, right? But no, no, you, you need to design P1 and yes, P2. Yes, you need to design. Yeah. And uh, when we design P1 and P2, then we apply this into the system. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so we have to define to, I mean, the, the exact condition to switch in the controllers, so it warranties the speed system that is stable, right? Yeah. So the timing is you, you, you evaluate the variable function where the alpha function. Oh. So we have the evaluate V1, V2, and uh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. You, you v evaluate V1. This, f so as soon as you are, you, you you switch right, and you know your V1 value. Yes. As soon as you are here, yes. and you compare the V1 value, the here, the smallest V1 value in the first time slot, which is this. So you know that it's greater than this V1. This value is greater than this, so you cannot switch. But you know, even if you don't switch, you know that V1 value will decrease, right? And you, can, you need to wait until it's smaller than this value, okay? So because you know you always got the V1 always decrease, so until you, it's, it's slower than this value that you can switch, okay? Not worthy, but it's, I, I mean, uh, we have many times to switch, and uh, it's, this time maybe better than last time. So, this time is oh. better than last so, time. So, it means that uh, there are different uh, exact values times we can switch. So, maybe it's we, if we switch as soon as it will be better than later, a little bit. Why? So because uh, the, 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 it's de decreased faster, maybe. Decreased so faster. Is it, is it, yes. And? I mean, the chance, the, the, the overall chance is decreased, right? But maybe this uh, strategy may be better than that strategy. How so do you define better? Yes. 
how do you define so better? I, I want to ask, is there any way to... to, to I, no, I, I say it's very it's a conserva conservative way. Yeah. It means you only the only s value you can verify is the, the over function value. As long as it's smaller than the previous minima value, you can switch. Yeah. And of course, you can find a way, even better way to 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 to, to switch. You can publish papers, okay. But again, it's sufficient and very conservative approach, okay. <coughs>